So we have a friend that lives off the grid, and when I say off the grid, I mean he really lives off the grid. Surprisingly enough, the only thing he keeps uh, is his cell phone. So he does have that. Uh, he uses a solar panel setup to charge the lead-acid battery to connect to and charge his cell phone. But the lead-acid battery is uh, kind of wore out, and it's not really uh, keeping enough charge to even charge his cell phone. So I decided to make a lithium-ion battery pack. I'm probably overbuilding it because I'm... Uh, putting components in there so we can check the status of the batteries, um, turn it on off switch uh, to take the batteries, go through a voltage converter, put to a charge. I mean, it's just, it's going to be fun. I'm doing this more because uh, I want to, and um, it looks like it's going to be a fun project. So let me go ahead and get started with this. All right, so I got this box together. Um, let me show you what I've got. It's been, uh, this box has been reused a few times, but uh, Here's a quick view of what I got. It's uh, basically got a little button to check the status of the batteries on off switch so that uh, any circuitry in there isn't killing uh, the batteries when it's not being used, a USB uh, plug. And uh, two charging posts. Uh, these are 12 volts, so you can either pull 12 volts out or um, charge it uh, via 12 volt source. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a, a solar, uh, solar panel. Um, also have one pre-built battery pack and um, let me show you this real quick so this one's already pre-built um, it's uh, nominal 12 volts uh, these batteries go they're rated at 3.7 when they charge up they're 4.2 I'm actually going to build another one and I'll show you how I'm going to do that now using these um, me being who I am I bought these Samsung batteries because I wanted a, something that was dependable the uh, other thing I'm going to be using is this little uh, buck voltage converter so this converter is uh, basically you can feed just about anything I think uh, if I remember the specs correctly it's 2 to 30 volts and it'll give you a, a 5 volt USB output at um, uh, up to 3 amps so it can be a fast charger as well uh, got this uh, battery management system and um, what I want to do is show you schematic and you'll be able to download these I'll put links in the description this is from uh, the vendor of the battery management system uh, not really a uh, concise uh, I don't, I'm not using that configuration I'm actually uh, putting these in basically one cell uh, one set of cells in series and I'm doing it twice and then I'll hook them up in parallel and then here's the circuit diagram for the schematic for the uh, for the overall uh, box with all the batteries in it so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put together uh, another uh, bank of batteries and um, get this thing all put together. So if you're interested in uh, how I made this spot welder, um, you can uh, go to the link above. And I've got a video on uh, how I made this spot welder. In this segment, I'm going to be putting the battery pack together. This was originally about 15 minutes of video, so I shortened it down and I'll just quickly talk over what I'm doing. First I hot glued the batteries together. After that I welded in the nickel strips uh, to put the uh, entire set of batteries in series. After I finish welding the batteries together I do a quick spot check to make sure it's 12 plus volts which it is. The next step is to add the battery control module. This controls how the battery charges um, and discharges actually um, and it does it on an individual cell basis so it really protects the battery pack. Uh, right now, I'm um, pre-soldering the connection points on that uh, control module. Once that's done, I uh, actually hot glue the control module to the battery pack. Then after that, it's just a, really a matter of uh, soldering all the connection points on the control module to the, um, to the battery packs at the appropriate locations, according to the schematic, which you can download in the link below. Once I get the final connection soldered in, the battery pack will be almost complete. But I will be doing one last thing, and that's to cut out a piece of cardboard to glue to the end of the battery pack. Uh, basically the end where the two battery packs face each other, so to eliminate any possibilities of them touching each other and shorting. Alright, so I've got these hot glued in there. Um, all the hot leads are insulated, and... Um, Except for these, this, these are not hot right now. These are connected to the battery pack. It looks kind of crappy, but uh, this is this is going to work. Um, I'm fairly confident it will. So one of the things I did was uh, 
I also have this little jack and I'm going to wire this into the circuit. And the reason I'm going to do that is uh, so if uh, you get a week of rain, which is not uncommon in North Carolina, uh, we can take the battery pack back from our friend and uh, put it on a 12-volt charger, get it fully charged up. Although there's basically uh, 8 amp hours of uh, capacity in here, so it should be, go through quite a bit of charges. Um, so let me go ahead and also get this little guy. And we're going to figure out where we're going to put him first before we do anything else. I want to actually be visible as well because there's a little light on this on this guy. All right, so I know where I'm going to put him. Let me do this. Flex negative, but it's positive, so we're good on that one. And um, let me go ahead and just get this out of the way. Do that on there. And projects like these, how cool is a really handy thing to have? So, somehow or another, I managed to lose a screw off of that. We'll see. If this thing will accept solder, it's not an issue. It looks like it will, so. And basically, all I'm doing is uh, setting this up so that we turn the charger on and off. And the reason for that is that I don't want that charging circuit to be uh, depleting the batteries when it's not in use. All right. That guy's in there. And I'm also going to, uh, there's little crimpers on here. I'm going to crimp that around the, uh, the wire just to make sure it's stable. All right, that's going to get together, be put together last, and um, let's get all the black black bars together. And now the uh, wires from the battery pack, those will be the last ones I strip because those are hot. And um, I don't want to risk them shorting to anything. So let's strip these guys. So we got these two battery packs from parallel. off of that.
I missed one wire. This one. See if we can even get this one on here. It should be fun. I think so. And put this in. <laughs> so we have uh, we have charge voltage. Uh, we have 12 volts coming off directly off the batteries. Let me check the battery posts. We should have 12 volts on these as well. Twelve point three eight. I noticed this thing does read a little bit low, but it's a good way to get an idea of where your charge is at. So nothing is ever complete without a test. Let me turn that off momentarily. I'm going to break the circuit, and I'm going to put a charger on the cell phone, and I'm going to see how many milliamps this actually uses on the twelve volt side. I know this little charger circuit is rated to for a three amp output. That's five volts DC. Let's find out what the drain is on the uh, 12 volt side. Alright, so to do that, I'm actually going to open the circuit up here. See that? I'm going to open it up here and I'm going to put an ammeter in there. Let me go ahead and um, put a charger in there, turn it on, and uh, Have a screwdriver. Right now, it's see there. There is a circuit draw, so you see you might be able to see the reflection of light, and uh, it's using uh, 10 milliamps. But let's see what happens when we plug the phone in. To the range has changed now. So I put it on a 10 amp range. It's actually drawing uh, 0 0.75 um, amps total, and that's off of the uh, directly off the 12 volts. It's not too bad. The phone seems to like it, and it's charging. Thirty-two minutes. Uh, uh, Thirty-two minutes to charge. So I don't know. That's necessarily doing a uh, fast charge, but uh, that's okay. This uh, this is capable of charging the phone. Uh, you can see it's drawing 0.7 amps. So it's going to get at least, if the amp hours is correct, I would say at least 10 hours worth of charge. Probably more along 12 hours. So this is a uh, this has worked out pretty good. Let me shut everything down. Reconnect this. I'm going to leave the phone hooked up to it for a while, draw down the voltage a little bit, and uh, I want to come back and test the charger, make sure it works. Um, I put this on uh, my phone and charged it for 20 minutes, started at 80%, took it 20 minutes to get it to 100%, the voltage drop was negligible, I mean maybe a tenth of a volt at most, so uh, this is a really good battery pack, 
8, 8, 8 amp hours total. The draw from the USB charger is 0.7 amps. I mean, I'm looking at probably 10 hours or so of, uh, of usage before the uh, voltage drops on the uh, battery so that you need to recharge it. So this is great. I'm really happy with it. All right, so this guy has been a howling success. Um, I really, uh, I really like the way this came out. So if we look, turn it on, see this little green light that comes on. Um, don't know if you can see it, but it's right underneath there. Um, that uh, supplies voltage to the USB plug. Have a little built-in uh, voltmeter so we can uh, monitor the status of the charge. Anyway, if you like this video, hit like. Don't forget to share and definitely subscribe. Hit the bell button. Make sure to check the channel out. I'll be posting videos like this uh, as well as uh, other uh, DIY topics. Thanks for watching.